Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and I decided to do a little bit of story time given what's been going on back home in the news. Um, anybody who knows me, uh, this might get a little ranty by the way, so I'm going to warn you now. Uh, education. I believe that education solves pretty much all problems. And I don't mean formal education. I don't, I'm not saying you got to go to Harvard. You, you got to go. You, you don't even have to graduate from high school. Um, but I believe that access, access to education um, should be a priority uh, for everybody, uh, especially those in the U.S. Um, and with the recent appointment of a certain individual um, by the Trump administration to be head of the Department of Education, it further shows something I've been saying for, for well, I guess a decade now that I've realized, is that Education is, or, or suppression of education, is the greatest tool for the oppressor. It is the easiest way to keep people down and to control and manipulate them. You cannot play, well, you kind of can, but it's very, very difficult to play or lie to or manipulate people who are educated and who are smart enough. For example, it is difficult to convince somebody like me uh, that all Muslims are terrorists. Uh, because I've interacted with Muslims, I've read uh, history of Islam. I know the history of Muslim countries. I'm not, I'm not blind to these things. But somebody who's never interacted with Muslims, who haven't read the history of Islam, who does, who doesn't know anything about Iran or Pakistan or Saudi Arabia or all these other countries, it is easy to just tell them this shit, and, and they'll believe it. Unfortunately. And it's so frustrating to watch this happen and to watch people uh, be manipulated and to believe that it is okay for somebody who clearly has absolutely zero commitment to education to be put in a position to control that education. So uh, that's the end of my rant, guys. Uh, that's as far as I'm going to go on that one. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to share my experience uh, with... Uh, growing up in public schools. I grew up in East Cleveland, Ohio, um, and I went to high school in East Cleveland, Ohio, uh, in a, a public education system that wasn't exactly great. Um, but from an international standpoint, it, it, it was brilliant. And I wanted to take a second to uh, tell uh, school teachers and teachers uh, who are some of the most undervalued, underappreciated people in the United States um, that I appreciate what you do. Uh, so many of us appreciate what you do and the impact that public school teachers have had on me and how I wouldn't be who I am or who I am without them. Um, so I want, this is story time. This is Eric. This this is my life kind of stories. Um, and we're going to go back to um, Shaw High School, and I'm going to make sure when I put this up on uh, YouTube or, and Facebook, I'm going to make sure I tag uh, two of the teachers, at least I'm in contact with two of the teachers I'm going to talk about, as well as a bunch of my friends that I went to high school with, and, and they're going to cooperate and they're going to co-sign uh, almost everything I'm about to say. So I'm going to talk about four teachers, um, and all of these uh, people were teachers at Shaw High School uh, when I went there um, in the late 90s. Uh, the very first one uh, is the, the, the person that I credit with my love for photography. So uh, let me step back. And her, na her name was Irene Schinkel. Um, I believe she changed her name. I think she got married uh, after I graduated. Um, it's uh, Chudzik, Chudzitsky, something like that. Um, but at the time, she was Irene Schinkel. Um, and I actually saw her uh, when I went back to my high school, maybe I want to say 2007, 2008. Uh, so, uh, young Eric, imagine young Eric this, but just younger. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much, for the most part, I'm the same person that I was in high school. Um, I thought I was smarter than most people. I absolutely hated school. I thought it was a waste of time because it was just so easy. And that was, that's, that's one of the problems with uh, low-income inner-city kids is those of us who were um, advanced or, or intelligent or creative we were stifled because we were stuck in a system where you had to take all these stupid standardized tests. I remember we had to take this thing called the cat test. Um, and I passed that shit in like eighth grade, like even before high school, I was done with it. It was, it was a kick. I think it was cat test. I have to look that up, but it was just easy. So, um, I, I didn't go to school a lot. Um, I would cut class. I was always truant and we had truant. I was always cutting school and 
the assistant principal, uh, Mr. Wasco, was a friend of my grandfather's. Um, they had grown up. And Mr. Wasco was so crazy how small Cleveland is because Mr. Wasco was my principal at three different schools growing up. It was like, uh, I think it was like elementary, junior high, then high school. Like, it, it was just like the man followed me around the city. Um, but Mr. Wasco uh, gave me an option. It was like either join a vocational program because part of my school was a vocational school uh, where you can learn uh, you can learn drafting, you can learn uh, beauty. They had a beautician department, they had um, auto uh, auto tech, they had firefighting, and then commercial arts. Um, so it was either that or get kicked out of school. Join a vocational program, get kicked out of school. So I decided I was going to go to become a barber, but good, but it was full because that's where all the girls were. Um, so I went over to commercial arts because it seemed easy. So I go to commercial arts and I get introduced to Irene Schinkel, Miss Schinkel. Um, and commercial arts was, um, and I'll never forget this, like, I went to commercial arts, but I'm not an artist. I am a terrible painter, drawer, I suck, I can't sculpt, I can't do anything. Um, and she recognized that really quick. Um, and she gave me a camera. And it was an old, I want to say an old Nikon, like F9 I think, F90. It was, old, it was an old nine con. It was like from the 90s. An uh, old film camera. And she gave me a roll of film and she let me loose. Um, and I was ran around the school taking pictures. And I, it, it took me maybe a day to go through that roll of film. And I came back and she taught me how to develop. And it was cool because what Irene Schinkel did was she didn't give me a book. I don't think I learned anything from her from a book. I learned everything from her hands-on. She taught me how to develop film. She taught me how to compose a shot. She taught me how to properly expose everything. Like She taught me hands-on how to be a photographer, which is the way I learn. Um, and even before uh, interacting with me, she knew that about me. And I think it's because she interacted. She was one of the few teachers at our school that interacted with creatives. Commercial arts is where the creatives were. Uh, the creative kids. So um, she understood our mentality and our views. Um, I remember I would run, I would burn through a roll of film, and I wanted another one, and she wouldn't give it to me. Um, and and this this tactic made me a better photographer because I knew that I had to wait three days before I can get another roll of film. So I was more careful as a photographer back then. Um, even like now with digital cameras, trrr, you, you know you take a thousand shots in a day, easy. Back then you. you didn't get that many shots you know like you, you had you had one role and I was it and it was a really really interesting time in, in my development and I love Irene Schinkel because she taught me how to be a photographer um, by showing me how to do it with my hands so uh, for that I want to thank you thank you so much um, Irene for I wouldn't be the photographer I am today without you uh, putting that camera in my hands and teaching me the discipline to be a better photographer thank so you. I don't really have favorite teachers but this one I, I think she probably is my favorite teacher ever and I've told her this uh, miss you uh, Lori Uragity Eiler oh man this woman ah oh, amazing absolutely amazing woman um, and you should Google her. Um, she is absolutely a, a pioneer in education in Ohio. Um, she was instructor for a, a program called uh, Street Street Law, uh, where she taught us about law and our rights as individuals. And this is so profound in the uh, Black community and Latino communities because a lot of times that growing up we would be harassed by police officers, um, and we didn't know our rights. And when, some, when you grow up being harassed and then somebody comes and tells you, like, these are your rights as a human being, that's profound to 13, 14, 15-year-old kids. Um, it, it has a transformative uh, nature and ability. And she taught us so much about not only our rights as individuals, but our rights as American citizens. Uh, um, so a lot of the lessons that I learned there, I carry over as an adult. Um, I was one step away from law school because of her, because of the things that I learned. Um, I joined uh, the mock trial team, and I was damn good uh, because of her. Um, she really, and if there was one teacher I would have to say outside of Ms. Schinkel who really set the foundation for my professional life, it would be Laura Uragli-Eiler. Um, 
absolutely absolutely amazing amazing teacher and i'm i i don't believe that i'm even close to the only student that she impacted this way because i know a lot of her former students ended up going to become prominent lawyers and judges in ohio and the surrounding area um, because she was just that brilliant of a teacher uh, last time I went to my high school was to go speak to her class. Um, and this was shortly be before uh, President Obama uh, was inaugurated. So I want to say this is 2007. And she organized a trip to go, uh, to take students to go and, and um, see the first black president uh, get inaugurated. Uh, because that's the kind of woman she is, um, the kind of education uh, educator that she is, and absolutely brilliant. Changed my life. Absolutely love her to death. Um, we're, we're Facebook friends, uh, so I'm going to tag her in this. Uh, but Lori, thank you so much. Um, you, you changed my life. I greatly appreciate what you've done for me and what you did for my peers as well. Um, and uh, it's so sad that you, you're, you're retired now. I wish you could teach forever. And uh, But I, I'm sure you're doing amazing things now. So this next teacher, I credit for this, this bravado, this, this swag, this energy, uh, this passion, this, this, this fearlessness that I have. Um, I come from a community that, it, that is a full of entertainers. Uh, the African-American community, particularly my family as well, um, is full of musicians and dancers and singers. Um, we are bred, we are taught to be entertainers. Um, you, you, it's hard, it was difficult in my community to find anybody that was shy. Uh, so uh, her name was Bonnie O'Leary, and she was our drama teacher um, and English teacher. Um, but she drama, uh, and she cast me uh, as uh, I was in Raisin in the Sun as uh, what was it, Bobo? I think it was. I think my name was Bobo in Raisin in the Sun. I was the guy uh, who told him the bad news that he got ripped off. Uh, God, uh, I want to say it was Bobo. I need to look up that that, that role. And uh, I was one of the T-Birds in Greece. Um, I was Duty in Greece. And uh, I don't think Duty even appeared in a movie, but in a play, Duty had a pretty good role. Um, but the reason I appreciated Bonnie was she taught me how to be a performer, how to engage an audience, how to project. Um, one of the biggest things was how to project my voice. Um, and people always ask me, why are you so loud? And I was like, well... This is just kind of the way I am. I've learned to project my voice, and that came from the training under her, um, how to perform, how to put on a show, how to make people smile, and how to uh, channel my energy. Before, I always had reckless energy. That energy was just reckless. Uh, but she taught me how to focus that into, um, in a way that's uh, creative and that can help people and energize and entertain people and I like to think I'm an entertaining uh, individual on a channel and when I do speaking engagement and different things like that she taught me how to be a speaker how to speak publicly um, and, and to get my point across and she also taught me how to say stop saying um as much so I apologize because I still do it I know but Bonnie O'Leary uh, she's an absolutely brilliant woman and she taught countless numbers of students um, how to be performers, how to be professionals, um, and how to uh, take art seriously. Uh, she really cultivated my passion for arts, which is a main reason that I absolutely love theater to this day. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but after I did that performance, I think a year later, because I would watch her, um, I had both roles in these plays were kind of small, and I would go to rehearsal, I would rehearse my part, and then I would watch her how she directed, how she conducted, how she organized. And I ended up taking that and produced my own show called the Millennium, the Millennium Music Festival. Um, I directed, I produced, I cast, I choreographed, um, I got the catering for that, I raised funds for that, all because I was able to watch her. Um, and, and oh God, I remember putting posters up on the wall uh, for this little festival I put together. Um, and it was all because of her and, and she, her inspiration. Uh, which is one of the main reasons I feel like I can pretty much do anything that I set my mind to today. So uh, thank you so much, Bonnie, for uh, putting that artistic uh, seed in me, uh, for getting the talent out there, uh, for teaching me how to speak publicly, and uh, for just being an all-around amazing person. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Last but not least, um, this is, you know, this man really, it, he, t he taught me, how to be a man in in certain ways. One of the things that has all that to this day bothers me is when somebody's not punctual, and it, it can all be traced back to Mr. Eiler. Uh, Mr. Eiler was my algebra teacher, 
Um, and I, earlier I told you guys I hated school. I doubly hated algebra class. Um, not only uh, because I just hate math, was because at the time I thought Mr. Otter was just a, he was an asshole. Um, but that was a kid, kid's mentality. Um, because Mr. Otter didn't take shit from anybody. I remember, I'll never forget this day. We, uh, our high school was on a main street. And across the street was the bus stop. Like literally, you can look out this window and, and see the bus. Uh, and I remember I came to class about a minute late. And I was like, hey, and he wouldn't let, he didn't want to let me in. And I was like, yo, I'm only a minute late. I'm only a minute late. He said, I'll tell you what, you go outside and you wait at that bus stop and wait for that bus to leave for one minute and see what happens. And he was dead as serious. And from that lesson, I realized that the world doesn't care about your excuses. The world is going to keep moving forward without you. And it gave me this different perspective on accountability and, and, and how I should conduct myself as a person, um, how I should value other people's time. And I think that is something that's severely lost today. And I don't want to, you know, bash the younger generation. I think this is just a people thing. People don't value each other's time and people's effort. And we, we default into making excuses instead of just rectifying the situation, as in not being late, um, studying a little bit harder, pushing yourself to be better um, when the standard has already been set. Um, so I really appreciate Mr. Eiler for this. And it's funny because Mr. Eiler kicked me out of high school. So he was my algebra teacher, but I want to say a year and a half, a year or two, I want to say two years. After I was his student, he became an administrator at my high school. And his job was to find out the kids who weren't living in the di district anymore and to send them to the proper school. Um, my mother had moved out. Uh, my mother kicked me out at 15. So my mother had moved out of the city of East Cleveland um, into uh, Cleveland district. And I didn't want to leave my high school. That's where all my friends were. Um, I, I didn't want to leave my high school. So Mr. Tyler found out about that because, you know, when the school sends letters and stuff out, um, you have to show proof of res residency um, and if they get returned um, and all that stuff. So he found out I was there and long story short, he kicked me out of school. Um, and I ended up having to go to a, a Cleveland Christian Academy to get my diploma my last year. And I came back and he was still an administrator and me and him probably had one of the best conversations um, that I've had with anybody. Um, and we just sat in his office and we just talked about life, uh, my career in the military, um, what it was like to be a teacher and transition into an administrator. Um, and, and, and it was so interesting when you become an adult, you see the perspective of teachers are far better. I mean, imagine dealing with a, a room full of, you know, 35 to 40 kids who don't have enough books, whose parents largely don't care about their education, who don't understand the importance of algebra, um, and, and, and just receiving a shitty pay. I don't know what he got paid, but it wasn't enough for what they were doing there. Um, but yeah, I, I really want to want to shout out Mr. Eiler because he taught me uh, not only how to be punctual, but how to be more responsible. So thank you so much for that, Mr. Eiler. So these are only like four of the teachers. Um, my high school was actually, uh, everybody probably says this in high school, but my high school was absolutely amazing. Like the quality of teachers, and it's so sad that a lot of them retired now. Um, like I came up kind of, these are the teachers who were a product of Reaganomics. Like these, these were the teachers who came up through the system in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, so, you know, at now at 30 years, they're, they're all retiring now. Um, but they gave a fuck. They really cared. All of these teachers cared about us. And that's something I, I, I can honestly say is that the, the, the teachers that I had in high school cared. And to this day, they still care. Now, I don't know what the public school system is now, but I have a lot of friends who are teachers, and I know that they care. And 
as Americans, and I'm talking specifically to Americans, uh, we have to support our teachers better. We have to ensure that the people who can do the job are put in a position to help these teachers uh, educate our future children. And let's not get caught up in this partisan crap where people are allowed to cut funding to schools. If there is one place that you don't cut funding, it's education, because that is where you're gonna find your skilled workers. That's where you're gonna find your doctors, your lawyers, your future politicians, the people that can help make America great again, are the ones who are coming up in the school system now who can truly think and analyze and understand what the world and, and what identity is on a global scale, as opposed to this ridiculous, compartmentalize Americanism. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get back on that rant, guys. Uh, but these teachers uh, that I mentioned, I want to thank you all so much. I want to thank all the public school teachers uh, and even the private school teacher, all the teachers who care about their kids, who are putting in those extra hours, who are paying for, for books and materials out of their own pockets. Uh, I support you. Um, I'm going to donate as much money as I can to you guys. Uh, I'm going to always champion the cause for you guys. Um, I think it's uh, ridiculous what's been going on for a long time, and I hope we can change things. I really, really do. So with that, have you guys had uh, an amazing teacher? Please tell your story in the comments below, um, and, and, and really, really continue to push to make the world better than you found it and make our education system better than you found it. I'll see you guys in the next video.